things that we want to do that we think the readers will want, uh, particularly discerning readers who, can, uh, who, who are looking for stuff that's not right down the middle, that does take more chances, and, uh, and readers who want to get to know these writers and, and what's in their heads. So that's, that's the advantage of Crazy 8 Press. One time, um, publishers controlled everything. They had the, the means of production, the means of distribution, and, uh, and, and it was really very difficult to go in a different direction, to go out on your own. But now, everybody has access to the means of production. Everybody has access to the means of distribution. The only thing they have to do is market it. And frankly, marketing is what traditional publishers were, were worst at. So now the only advantage they have is that they can give you an advance. But even advances have gotten smaller and smaller over the years as, as uh, uh, books compete with other media. So really, it makes a lot of sense to go out on your own, particularly if you already have a following, as, as we do. Um, is that good? I don't know. It's inevitable. It was a little lonely sometimes. It was just me and, and the computer. Um, but, uh, but obviously doing what you want to do is a great, is a great thing. Um, the uh, independent publishing is not easy. The tough part is not, not writing the books, the tough part, or distributing the books. The tough part is marketing the books. And, and that remains a challenge. It remains a challenge even for us. Um, so uh, uh, the more you can, the more you can find ways to for credibility, ways uh, to to maintain your credibility, to build your credibility, and the more contacts you can make, uh, the better off you are. For instance, um, if you are writing a book um, about. Um, about uh, dentistry and you're a dentist well you have an advantage because you can go in and sell your your book in your dental office or maybe your friends dental offices so if you have a, um, a book about a particular thing and you have an extra way of selling it uh, you're at an advantage um, my friend uh, Howie Weinstein uh, um, trains dogs and he has a book uh, about dog training it's a natural because he has a, every time he brings in another client, it's a potential book purchaser. So that helps when you're when you're um, when you're independent publishing. Obviously, I'm intrigued by Patrick's potential return. If, if that happens, that would be fantastic. First of all, because, you know, you love seeing John, uh, uh, um, uh, John Luke Picard return to the big screen, and Patrick's a great actor, um, so there's that. And also, you know, you want to see how is it going to be a little different, he'll be a little more advanced. I always thought that the best place for Star Trek to be is a little later in the timeline than the last incarnation. So if they can take this forward from where we saw uh, uh, Voyager leave off, I, I think that's very fertile ground. Uh, as far as the Stargazer series, in the, in the uh, first season of Next Generation, they had an episode called The Battle, and they established that Picard had an earlier command on a ship called Stargazer. And I thought, wow. That's something we really need to investigate. And I gave in a proposal, and they liked it at uh, Pocket and also at Paramount. And uh, that led to the first uh, uh, Next Generation hardcover called Reunion. And it's a murder mystery in which Picard is reunited with, on the Enterprise with his crew from the Stargazer. 
and someone committed a murder. Uh, and then that was very well received, and before I knew it, I was doing uh, the Stargazer crew, uh, crew is appearing in comic books that I wrote, and, and then uh, short stories, and um, uh, other people's Star Trek books, and I said, you know what, what the heck? And I, and I decided to embark on a series of six books with those Stargazer characters in the Stargazer time frame. And that was great. I invented, you know, a whole crew. And at least as far as the uh, Trek Lit uh, thread is concerned, that's, it's Trek Lit canon. I don't, I don't uh, have any illusions that they'll be following it um, uh, on the screen, but at least as far as the written word is concerned, it's pretty much been accepted that these are the characters, these are the crew of the Stargazer. That's, that's very um, gratifying. You know, I, I, can't, I can't say I've been particularly influenced by, by uh, any of them. I guess, um, uh, I guess I saw Murder on the Orient Express a long time ago, and, and uh, you know, I watched uh, TV, TV murder mysteries, you know, and probably going back to maybe as far as Perry Mason. But, um, but uh, I can't say I was ever a big mystery reader. But I've always loved writing them. They're they're very very satisfying. I mean, you you uh, the, you present the microcosm, then then there's a problem in the microcosm, and then you solve the problem in the microcosm. It's very it's very um, uh, uh, there's a there's a, a a great sense of closure there, and and uh, and a natural sense of drama. As soon as somebody's dead, right, everybody's interested. It's very dramatic. We started out as a Kickstarter, but that's, that's closed now, so um, what they should do is look for the project on Comixology if they're into e-comics, uh, and if not, um, they can go to my website, uh, michaeljanfriedman.net, for uh, ongoing news about the project and when the graphic novel will be available and uh, through what systems and in what locations. So uh, it, it's going to be very exciting. And let me say one thing. The artwork is spectacular. Uh, my partner in this is a guy named Caio Cacao. He's a Brazilian artist who does my covers and uh, all my artwork. And, uh, and his, his first love is comics. And he's doing a spectacular job on the, uh, the line art as well as the colors. Um, I, I couldn't have asked for a more perfect or more spectacular artist to work with. He's, he's doing a great, great job. And my only fear is that when people read it, they'll be thinking so much more about the artwork than the story. It's that good. Well, I'm very excited to be seeing it. Michael, I want to thank you again for your time and for joining us here on Movers and Shakers Unlimited. I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed speaking with you.